So every now and again, I get this creative urge and I like to share with you something that I call vaguely creative. And today it's going to be about my overlays. My name's Inwells and welcome to the In Crowd. So I sometimes get um, requests or questions about how I create my um, overlay for our live actual play streams. And so I thought today what I'll do is take you step by step through that um, creation. Now I have to say at this point that I've just developed this myself over a period of years. So I'm not saying that this is the best way to do it or the only way to do it. Um, I did do um, a short video about how I made my tokens and lots of people posted below saying you can do it this way. This is a much better way. So thank you so much for sharing those expertise with the community. I really do appreciate that. And the same goes with this one. If you have other ways of doing them, please do let me know. But remember, if you have enjoyed this um, video or found it helpful, then don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And if you would like to provide some extra support, if you know what I mean, then the link to my Patreon page is in the comments below. I'm always looking to develop and promote my content in search of, in well, I just want to give up work and do this full time. Anyway, any support you give, whether or not that's a follow, a like, a share, I really do appreciate it. Okay, enough of me waffling on, let's get down to the creative stuff. So I'm going to try to do this in one take. So I apologize now for any um, mistakes or bloopers or anything like that, but I don't want to make it perfect because that's not how I operate at all. Okay then, let's um, wipe across to my Photoshop. So Photoshop is my choice of um, graphic pad or graphic design of imagery um, creator. So other um, sort of like Photoshop um, equivalents are available. And so please feel free to use GIMP or whatever you wish to use. I'm sure the actual how I'm going to do this will be uh, available on everything. I'm going to be up in this little top corner because then I think you can see everything that's going on down there. And I, every now and again, I'm going to look over there because I'm just checking to make sure uh, you can see what's happening. So uh, this is my PSD file and I, hopefully you can see the cursor and you can see that this is set up um, for our recent um, white death scenario and this is basically the background and what I do is that I set everything up on this one background rather than adding other things into OBS live or Streamlabs when I'm streaming. I just find that that's a lot easier and I can move cameras around. So down here and I apologize now because the organization is dreadful. I know it is, but um, bear with. So essentially what I have is that I start off with a, a completely um, blank um, sheet of paper. So do, just to sort of like um, to show you this, I'm just rearranging everything here. Um, let me just right. So, so here's here's the the blank bit of paper that I start off with. Let me remove um, all my. Um, I'm just. I'm not. I never remove them. I just. Um, de I just sort of like um, take them all off, and then I can sort of like see everything. So basically, what I do is that I start off with a blank piece of paper, a blank image like this. So this is completely blank. And then what I do is that I think about how many people I want on the actual stream. So normally this is three 
and then uh, or four and me sometimes it's three or me and me sometimes it's more i used to have um, a D, D adventure um which used to have a lot more on it so you you can see from um this um this is my um background for starfinder and if i just remove that you can see that that's three and me um I've got another one down here that is sort of like, um, this is the background for my D&D &D one that I used to play um, when I used to play 5th edition. This is one, the, the background there is for um, um, Mithras and that's my background for Mithras. And I have all these sort of like set up um, already. So what I do is this, I decide how many people I want so I'm going to use this one as an example I'm just scrolling around because my organization is absolutely dire and the first thing I need to do is that I just need to copy that now I just do that by selecting it and grabbing putting it on click and drag it and putting it onto um, the layer thing down here and that just gives me a new layer now what I've actually created already and you can see that are these boxes now what I did with these boxes if you actually have a look all I actually did was created um, something that has no fill and has a um, border on it and so all I do this one let, let's make the border red so you can see it so all I do is that I just left click and drag it out and make my border like so now as you can see this is this would be a window in which a zoom would sit behind now obviously that's not a very wide um, frame so what I do then is that I just sort of like here I increase the frame um, how big I want it now what I try to do is that I try to have frames that match the game um, so for example the orange one is for Mithras um, I then have some others um, like this one the red one is for Starfinder and what else have I got what's this one that's a, a Mithras one as well I should really just sort of number these um the blue ones that was a white death one now the the beneficial thing about this is that once you know how big your square is how big your frame's going to be then you can um, just replicate it so you can see down here that I have bigger square p2 bigger square play one so this stands for bigger square for player one so these are the player squares and you can see that i have a whole load of different ones and what i generally did right at the beginning is that i put them all into place where they they would be let me just um, put that back where it where it would be so like here or um let me I forget which one I had these are the um, these are the white death ones and I put them all into position around the um, around the actual um, screen so if I get rid of that one and um, let me find them those are my big squares up um, I can actually just like click on it and it'll show me where it is um so what i do is that i make the squares i make the frames and i adjust them so i can get the right size and then i just duplicate them so once the, it was a whole load of hassle to start off with trying to get everything duplicated but once i've got them i i don't recreate them i just keep duplicating them over and over and over now as you can probably see this one does not look like those at all and this has got a layer style on it and what the layer style is I'll just find them so you can um, see is that and oh, I like that this is a dark a dark blue you can see that it's got a, a stroke around it and a bevel so um, what I've done is that I've decided this layer style and if you look down here it's got a level and boss a stroke and a drop shadow 
And then all I do for this is that once I've made one, I right click on there, I copy the layer style. So say for example, I'm going on to this red one, here's my new red triangle, and I'll just right click and paste the layer style. And that's it, instantly it looks absolute, a lot, lot better. So what I do then, and let's just get um, some um, almost like brighter color ones for you. I'll see whether or not, what, what are these, I wonder. Um, I just need to find out where my, I think these are the green ones that I used. Oh yes, so oh, this, this, this is a, an interesting one. So let me put um, these up for you so you can see these. So these I wanted to have something slightly different and this is when we played um, three people and you notice that I've made the the bottom slightly bigger so I could put names on them okay so those are still just frames with with when I've extended this bottom bit um, what these are blue I'm looking for my orange ones um, those are red ones I've got some nice um, okay then, so here, here's, well, hang on, let's, um, let me just get rid of those. I told you it would be a, a waffly video. I did mention it because my, my brain goes all over the place. So here's, here's, um, um, I'm trying to get the ones that I would use in an actual adventure to, to show you. Cause I've got so many set up here. Uh, it's unbelievable. Right, let's get, take these off. Da, da, oops, keep that one on. Ba, ba, ba. Let's find some up here. Right, what are these? Right, those, I don't want to use those cause they're a bit, ah, oh, here we go. Here's some, ah, oh, here we go. So these are, these are obviously for something like um, Mithras that I use. So what I do now, so once I've got all the squares where I want them to be, I have to cut out the background. So what I want the background to do is to have holes in it. So when I put this into my streaming software, if I put zoom behind it, the zoom picture will stick through those holes. Now, it took me ages to find out how to do this, but I've got it off to a fine T now and I can do it so easily. So the first thing I do is that I make sure that I'm clicked on the background layer. Okay, so I have to click on the background layer. So can you see, this is my background layer and down here, this is the one selected. And I'm this is not clicked this is now clicked so i'm on that background layer i have my frames in place so i know where i want the holes then i go up to this rectangular select tool and what i do is that i come up to this first one and i hit the corner of it of the not the top corner so sort of like the inner more corner left click and drag it out like so now, what I've done is that I've selected a gap behind that um, frame. Now, because I'm on the background layer, I'm not actually selecting that fla fra flame? frame. I'm selecting the background. So when I hit delete now, it's not going to delete that frame. It's going to delete the bit behind it. So I just click it like that. Notice now you can see why I've got the drop shadow on. Can you see it just at the edge there? Okay, so you, you can see that that's sort of like a bit of a drop shadow that actually puts a bit of depth, I think, to the people. Now, originally what I then did was try to move this selected area round and select another bit, but really and truly you don't need to do that. Control D just deselects it. Then I'll go to the next one, um, still with this rectangular marquee selected, left click and drag it out. Make sure I'm on the background layer and delete. And then again, left click, drag it out and delete. So as long as you're on the background layer, then this bit works. You know where your frames are going to be and that's it. So now what I have 
is that if I actually sort of like um, turn off this frame, can you see I've got a hole in the background? And that's where I'm going to slide the zoom um, behind or the camera behind. And then these are then sat over the top. Now, the only other thing I do then, and I've got um, a group of this, these, I have on here, there's need to find it. It's the only sort of like group thing I've done what's, um, that actually sort of like works. I've then um, put together, if I can find them, I have a group. Uh, here it is. So this is the group. And I actually made, you can see um, Medivax down here that says Matheson. I actually made a group. I'm just going to move it up the, the layer style. Uh, let's get it right to the top. Well, let's get it up as far up as I can. And then you'll be able to see it. Okay, so obviously um, I haven't put um, Medivax um, on so I'll just delete that at the moment and I need to delete his uh, square as well so can you see what I did then is that I've made these lit these smaller rectangles I put the the same bevel on them to sort of like stand them up and then what I do so literally I'm um, just to show you because I, I don't want to get told off for jumping um, so um, they always have a nice yellow. Um, so I've, I'm doing a box. I've got a, a background color. Let's choose um, a green. I've got a yellow stroke with it. And all I do is just drag it out like so. And then what I do is that you can see down here, there's a bevel and a stroke on it. So I just click on that copy the layer um, style um, make sure i'm on my snowflake as i call it click on here and paste the layer style and that's it it's done and then this can be dragged to the right place and i'll just um, deselect that this can be dragged to the right place and then i put a text layer on top of it now the only other thing that i do is that i have all the tokens and I put all the tokens in the right place. So Paul Hazard normally has, has this box here. And these are put in the right place on the overlay. Now, the only reason I do that is that otherwise there's, it's such a faff in um, OBS Live or Streamlabs that there's so many things to move about. It just gets too busy for me. And so I put it all on the overlay and then I export this um, as a PNG and then import it as an image to my streaming software. Now, remember those little gaps are where the zoom are going. So this will sit on a sort of like up here and then the zoom cameras will be further down like that. So you'll be able to see it through. And that's it. That's um, exactly how I do it um, every single time. I hope that has given you a bit of an insight. And if you do have any questions, then please do put them in the comments below. I'll probably make another one of these videos. I'm just going to cut to big me and put my whirly things back on. I'll probably make another one of these videos if people would like to see it, how I actually set up my streaming software when I'm gaming. And by all means, I can show you that um, as well. But I hope this has been helpful. It's been vaguely creative. And I've just shown you how I do my overlays. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I will catch you all later. Have fun creating overlays. See ya.